Well, good evening, everyone. Will you guys stand with us? How are y'all doing tonight? You good? Having a good week? Amen. Me too. Yeah. It's good to see Pastor Mike back and well here in the room. It's awesome. Yes. Amen. Well, God is good. Let's go before him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. Lord, we just ask you to open up the heavens tonight. Lord, and experience your presence together. Lord, as we just come in union to worship you, God, in all of your holiness, Lord. We just pray for everyone watching, God, that they will just be ministered to as well, not only in the worship, but in the sermon, God. Just anoint this place. Lord, we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. stronghold God we just declare victory in this place that every chain is broken we declare freedom over this house and every person here Lord 
we thank you that we are sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. Lord, we just stand in victory, God. We stand in your freedom, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name.
Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see Of the goodness of God
If you believe that he's your way maker, just lift your hands to worship him tonight. Just wave your hands to the Lord and call him way maker. Just wave your hands to the Lord tonight and call him way maker. No matter what it is you're going through, he is here to meet you at the point of your needs. Just lift up your hands tonight and worship him. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Call him something lovely. Say you are good and your mercies endure forever. You are the way maker, the miracle worker. You are the light in the darkness. You make a way where there is no way. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the praise. King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're moving in our midst. I worship.
Jesus. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Amen. Isn't it great to feel a God's love? Isn't it great? Isn't it wonderful to be able to love him back? Amen. You know, I mean, when he love when he pours his love out on us, it's awesome. It's awesome. I have a small praise, well, there's no such thing as a small praise report. I have a praise report that I, I want to speak of for myself. I love this church. Last Sunday, I was having a pretty, not too many people noticed, but the ones that did, I thank God for them. I was having a hard time Sunday. To be honest, I wasn't sure 
that I was going to be alive when the service is over. I don't know what was going on. God does. People saw me. Some people laid hands on me and prayed for me. Others said, Bill, are you all right? Do you need something? Can I get you something? The Holy Spirit was moving. He cares about us. He cares. Looking back, I'm pretty sure I wasn't fixing to die, but the devil wanted me to think I was, you know? But it really, really moved my heart. Just different individuals, you know? And then tonight people said, Bill, are you doing okay? You doing all right? You know, I'm, I'm not the youngest one in here. Maybe the oldest, but pretty close. Joy. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Paquito. <huh? laughs> but anyway, I just love all of y'all, and I love God so much. And You know, he, we serve such a wonderful God that, that cares. He cares. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, we prayed last week uh, for uh, the Norman, Eric's mom, Christy Moore's mother-in-law's friend, Norman, and they thought he had a heart attack. And they're saying now that he did not have a heart attack. We prayed for him. Something was out of whack. His heartbeat really got really fast. And they kept him overnight and said, it may happen again, but... He said, I'm healed. Whatever it was, he said, I'm healed. And then he said, thank the people at this church for praying for him. Amen? Amen. Uh, Hope and Brent Parker uh, told us that all their kids and their grandkids and their niece got to come home after the Hurricane Ida. Uh, one had some damage to the roof and a swing set blew away, but... All in all, everybody was good. God is good. Amen? Amen. We requested prayer this morning, or Cindy asked us to pray for her sister this morning, but she passed away today, this morning, and uh, Cindy said that her sister, Teresa, had been like a mother to her all her life. And just, we need to pray for the family and all the friends that's involved in Teresa's life, because I know that you know, they, they care. They care. And it's, it's hard when you lose a loved one. It's hard when you lose a loved one. Uh, Jane Daniels asked that we pray for a patch. And I think that this is a grandson of theirs, I think. Either way, he's, a col he's at college on a baseball scholarship. Baseball scholarship and he's in, in his senior year. And he was licking, looking to go pro. And he had a bad heat stroke and has been told that he may not be able to ever play again because of overeating. Uh, we want to, they're just asking that get a good report that God would be in charge and it, that uh, he'd get a good report from the doctor and he could go ahead and get that high paying job when the time comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we prayed for Ennis's mom. She went to be with the Lord last Thursday morning. Uh, let's just keep, please, please keep Ennis and his family in prayer as they make arrangements. Uh, Tim Twitchell has asked that we pray for Lottie's friend, her husband, Mark. He has a diagnosis of pneumonia due to COVID. Pray that he is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand so we can take these needs to the Lord. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace to us. We thank you that you sent your only son to die on the cross and to be raised from the dead. Lord, take the stripes on his back for our healing, Lord. And Father, we thank you, God, that you love us. And Lord, we lift up all the names on this list tonight. And Lord, the names of the people that's not even, there's people's names that should be on this list that we don't know about yet, Father. And we pray, God, that you would minister to them. Meet their needs, Lord. Father, we pray for our pastor and his family tonight, Lord God. And Lord, bring bring him along, Lord, and, and just comfort and heal his body 100%, 1,000%, Lord. Lord, make him better than you. And Lord, we just thank you, God, 
for your love. We know you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker, God. Amen. And God, we just thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Bill. It's offering time. If you need to offer an envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to give you one. Those of you who are giving online, please use our church website or our app and you'll give in tonight. As you prepare your offering, I want to share a scripture with you in Joel chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Thank God for a Holy Ghost church, amen? When people can come and sense the infirmity or whatever the enemy's trying to do to a member and they can come like they did for Bill and just lay hands on him. That, you don't get that at every church, amen? You don't get that at every church. The Holy Spirit is here. God says in his word, I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty, my God in heaven, and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt with you wondrously. And you, my people, shall never be ashamed. Oh, that's a good scripture. Shame is not our portion. Victory. Hallelujah. Man, you don't get that. That's our portion. If you believe that tonight, stand to your feet. Claim what is yours. Can I? There, there we go. There we go. Thank you. I know it by heart, but I'd like to see it. Lord, I worship you with my tithe and my offering. I thank you for bringing me out of bondage into blessings. I believe I'm now free from poverty and lack. Everything I put my hands to prosperous. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Lord, let the ministry and spirits be released. Let them gather in my harvest now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you in your giving tonight. Amen. Can someone shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, that wasn't loud enough. Can someone shout an even louder hallelujah? Hallelujah. I'm not on? No. I guess I'm acting like Papa this morning, or this evening rather. Is it? Now? 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 Okay. Anyways, we start again. Can somebody shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah! Amen. Let's um, put up the confession from the book of Isaiah. And can we stand as we say that together? Let's go. The Lord God, the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word and season to be his word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the Lord. The Lord God, spoken by the ear, now I can speak a word. Amen. I think one service we should have that not put up. And see how many of us can say it by heart. That'll be fun. That'll be a fun competition. And maybe convince Pastor to give whoever says it right, maybe a gift card. This time to, I don't know, somewhere fancy. Maybe for the child or something. Anyways, today I'll be speaking on the pillars of praise. But before we start, I'd like us to just um, finish a word of prayer. Could we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word brings light and understanding. And we thank you because we know you're here with us. And you're here to meet us at the point of our needs and just take us to the next level. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So nothing on earth can connect us to the Spirit, to the Father of all spirits as quickly as praise. Amen? Right. Nothing on earth can connect us faster to the Father of all spirits as quickly as praise. The Bible says in John 4, 22, that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a? Spirit. God is a? Spirit. So we, that's settled. God is not man. He's not 
an imagination. He is not whatever everyone in the world is saying these days. He is a spirit. That's fundamental. And if we must worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now we see that praise connects us to our human spirits, the small s, like Pastor likes to say, to his spirits, the big S. The bridge that makes it happen really fast is praise. Can someone say praise? Praise. Praise is the secret of supernatural turnaround. It is when you see success, and I'm not talking about success as the world defines it, you know, wealthy, have your Bentley or Tesla these days now, and all of that fancy stuff. That's not, that's not success according to the word of God. When you see true kingdom success, if you look closely behind, you'll see praise. Amen? As a matter of fact, when we praise God, he steps into situations himself. Now we know we have ministering angels. We know God sends angels on assignments. We all know that, right? You know, Lord, I need help. I need this miracle and that miracle. And he has all these angels at our disposal. But you see, when we start to praise, I like to think that God doesn't send angels. He comes himself. Because the Bible says, and I think that's in Psalm 22, verse 3. Can we put it up there? Psalm 22, verse 3. That God himself, Jehovah. Oh, I think I... I think I have the wrong scripture up there. Inhabits the praises of his people. God himself steps in. So when you start to pray, he comes to live there. And when God comes, I like to think, no, I don't like to think, I know without a doubt that no problem can exist when God is there. Do you believe that? Do you all believe it? Nothing, no darkness can stop the light he brings, the light his presence brings. He inhabits, you know, there's something they say in Nigeria. God doesn't eat mac and cheese or potatoes. He eats praise. <laughs> That's his food. He lives in praise. He comes down. Once you start to praise, you create a home for him. And, and every time he comes, or comes in, things just begin to happen. How else would you explain the walls of Jericho? How else? Imagine walls so thick, five chariots could stay on them. And imagine people just walking round one time each day, and then on the seventh day going seven times, and then blowing the trumpet, and then shouting praises unto God. And all of a sudden, the walls come. How else can we explain that? There's no logical explanation. And I know it's, you know, when we read these things from the Bible, it's like, well, it happened back in the day. Do you know if we decided to do that, pick a random wall in Cyprus, well, obviously it had to be for a reason. We couldn't just pick it because we wanted to. And we put all these principles of praise in action, the same thing will happen. Jesus Christ the same? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes, amen. David is one of my favorite people in the Bible. That guy... I remember when I was young, one time my dad said, who wants to be like David? I'm like, me, 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 me. And he's like, well, who wants to go through the problems of David? I'm like, well, definitely not me. That guy was plagued with problems and problems. I mean, it was like one thing to the other to the other. But he was so intimate with God. The intimacy, I mean, sometimes when you read the Psalms, it's like a man talking to his lover. It's not like someone talking to a God he doesn't know. And this was even in the midst of difficult times. Why was David consistent in and out of season? Praise. He understood the assignments. He understood that the reason we are here is to give God praise. So he decided no matter what it is, Saul is chasing me, my best friend Jonathan is God, it doesn't matter. Not that, Jonathan, oh Jesus. I will give God praise, and I will consistently give God praise. And that is why he carried the presence of God with him. When he went, God, God stepped in 
Imagine God living in your home just because you're giving him praise. Amen? We know for a fact that David did not just praise in times of plenty, he also praised in times of difficulty. And I have wondered, because I've also gone through some times of difficulty, and I've wondered how do you praise when things are not going your way? And take it from me, I like to have my way. Daniel can testify. How do you keep your praise up when things are not going the way you want them to go? I mean, you know, pray, when we talk about praise, sometimes we think about what happens before the sermon, you know, that little 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and all of that. And even that time, if you catch yourself, sometimes you'll see, especially if you're going through a lot, you'll see your mind has the tendency to take a stroll. You know, you're there just staring at the screen, and your mind is going like, starts out with a stroll, and at the end of the praise session, it's going like 100 miles an hour, just thinking of all the million things. And at the end of the day, you're like, okay, praise worship done. Now on to the sermon. You know, how are we able to make sure our praise is not artificial? How are we able to give? Because the only praise that turns the situation around is praise that comes from the heart. It is true praise. It's not the word we say. It's not just the singing the song, or sometimes even the excitement we feel when we sing the song. It is spirit connecting to spirit. That is where praise happens. That's, that's when praise occurs. And that's, that's pretty much what I want to talk about this evening. The pillars of praise. Any praise that does not come from our spirit cannot produce results. Because remember, God is a spirit. And if we must worship him, it must be in spirit and in truth. The first pillar of praise I want to talk about. What makes our praise not artificial? What makes it real praise? is understanding the joy of salvation. Amen? Without an understanding of the joy of salvation, praise is artificial. It doesn't come from the heart. And when it doesn't come from the heart, it doesn't get anywhere. It doesn't even pass this roof. It just remains with us. Joy, as we all know, is a fruit of the Spirit that was put in us at the new birth. We got all the fruit of the Spirit. I like to think when we receive, you know, Jesus and we get the fruit, it comes out as li really little fruit. And then it starts to grow as we mature in Christ and grow and grow. But until that joy can grow and overshadow our minds, transformation cannot occur. Till that joy can grow so big, it grows even larger than our human spirit and it begins to influence our minds. And you know, our bodies are just cartons anyway, so what, if our spirit and our minds are going the same way, our body naturally will follow. Until it starts to influence our minds and then, and, and, and then it overpowers our mind. True transformation never occurs in our lives. I want us to turn to Isaiah 12, verse 2 and 3 of scroll, whatever. It says, behold, the King James says, Jehovah is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I want you to take note of some things it says here. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Look at that. Therefore, with what? Oh, no, I didn't hear that. With what? Joy. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. It sounds abstract till you go back to verse 2 and realize it says, God is my salvation. So you are thinking, you're, you're, if we explain this as easy as we can, you're saying, with joy, I will draw water out of God. With joy, I will draw whatever I need out of God. That's pretty much the Noja translation of that verse. With joy, I will draw out of the well of salvation. When we were little, we used to visit my grandma. We stayed with her every weekend. Um, I don't know, she, she didn't stay too far from my parents, but it was just such a fun place to be. My grandma was a truly amazing woman. And for some reason, I don't know, they had a well. 
I don't even know why they had a well, but they had a well. It was a very large home, and they had a well. And I know in modern-day Cyprus, wells are not you know, what we see every day. And even at my parents' home, I had never seen one. My grandma's home was where I had the well. And it wasn't a, it was, there was water, but it wasn't a fully functional well because everything was going on in the house. But you know, when you get a couple of pastor's kids together every weekend, you have to play Bible stuff. So we would always play the woman at the well. <laughs> I don't think we really understood that story, but whatever. <laughs> there was a well, and there were ladies, and I mean, children, and that was just the fun thing to do. So we'll do women at the well, and they'll have this pail with a little, with a thick rope tied to the pail. And, you know, we'll throw it in, and then my older brother, a cousin, would say, "He'll draw it, draw it," and then we'll be like, "Drink," <laughs> and you'll never thirst again. And I think, if I remember correctly, the water never tasted so good. But because we really wanted to be great actors, we, I will never thirst again. And the very next day, we're back to the well acting the same little play. But you see, those words are so true. The words Jesus told the woman at the well. Drink from me. I think that's in the book of John. And you will never, ever thirst again. Drink me. Whatever we need, it is in God. He is that well. So, if you're wanting to draw, let's say what? Your rent. It's in the well. And guess what? Even better news, the well never runs dry. So you could pull your rent every single month till you move on to pulling your mortgage every single month till you pay off your home and you move on to buying another home and it will never run dry. But you need to use joy to pull out of it, out of that well. You can't stand and look at the well and you're like, God, a oh, well of salvation. I need my rent. I need my children, you know, to know God. I need, and there's no joy going in. The joy is the pill. It's what you use to draw. Well, I hope, are we understanding this evening? Because when we build our praise on that foundation, it comes straight from the heart and straight to the spirit of spirits. Amen? Our feelings have very little to do with praise. It has almost nothing. Happiness has zero to do with praising God. You don't have to be happy to praise God. It doesn't matter. All you need to praise God is joy. You don't need to be happy. As a matter of fact, David was probably sad half the time. <laughs> he wrote the, <laughs> half of the books, in, in, uh, half of the chapters in, in the book of Psalms. He'll say, oh my soul, and then the very next verse he's saying, but I will yet praise you. And he's going, oh, I'm so downcast, but I will praise you. He was sad. I like to think he was miserable a lot of the time. So happiness doesn't have to do with it. You don't need to be happy to praise God. Amen? What you need to do is understand that no matter what the devil throws at you, you already have the greatest gift, and that is your salvation. He can never take it away from you. He can't. No matter what he throws at you, your children, your husband, your wife, your finances, your health, whatever, he's already lost. You know it already. You know, I have the, I, I, I am by the well of salvation. I have everything. This is why the Christians who are persecuted in, in Afghanistan, in northern part of Nigeria, in China, this is why they go with joy and put down their heads and say, you could cut off my head. It means nothing. And then you are here watching them on TV and you're like, wait, what? Don't come near my head with that knife. This is, I mean, I would like to think, you know, because I, I, I met a lady, Miss Binta, and she shared how they, she, she witnessed this execution in the northern part of Nigeria. And she's like, they were not even saying, you know, they weren't just being hunted and killed. They were jubilating, rejoicing to be killed. So they'll line them up and say, say Allah Kubab, you know, whatever it is they say. And they're like, Jesus is Lord, or praise the Lord. And they're, they're, they're laughing and they're excited. And they'll put them down and everybody's watching and you know it's going to be your turn next. And they get the, and they hack up the head. Next. And you're, praise the Lord. And I mean, it's going on and on. And we're talking men and women and children. That's 
not happiness. That, that, that is joy. They understand that they have already won in eternity. Amen. There's a difference between time and eternity. We live in time. God lives in eternity. That's why he has everything in his hands. So they understand no matter what, you just kill my body. You're not touching my soul. You're not touching my spirit. They know that. As a matter of fact, they feel sorry for us <laughs> who are here. They're like, oops, well, we've made it already. Amen? Amen. I want us to understand that. When we understand that we have the greatest gift there is, you will give God praise. You will give give God praise in and out of season. It won't matter what is going on. You already understand, I have my path to eternity. What, What David says, I would not fear what man can do unto me. This is why Paul, I, I think it's in, let's, let's quickly turn there. I think it's in the book of 2 Corinthians 7 verse 4. Paul talks about being joyful in tribulation. He says, great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly, not just joyful, exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. And we know Paul went through a lot. Of all what? If you haven't read up on Paul, you need to. He went through everything. I mean, the stripes and imprisonment and torture and shipwreck. And if he were probably in our world today, we'd be like, man, that guy has some bad luck going on. <laughs> and yet, he was joyful because he understood that no matter what the devil was throwing at him, it's not enough to steal my praise. I already have eternity. Amen. This joy comes from knowing who is on our side, not what is on the other side. It's in knowing. Remember, you're standing by the well. Everything you need is there. Why should you stress? Everything you need is in the well. All you need to do is draw. Well, you see, the enemy we have, he's very tricky. He knows he can't steal the well, obviously. You can't steal God. He knows that. The only way he can mess with you is to steal that pill. You know, the joy. He's like, ah, if I get that, there's no way they're going to draw. They're going to complain. They're going to stop praising. And once they stop praising, guess where God is not going to be with them? Hurrah, I've won. So he will do everything, throw everything at you to convince you, you know, I talk about Nigeria a lot because that's where I'm from and I lived there for almost, actually, pretty much 99.9% of my life and all my experiences are based off there. And there's this standing joke sometimes when people are going through stress and you're a Christian, you're going to church, people will tell you, well, are you going to eat your salvation? Is that going to be your dinner? (laughs) You know, when people are saying, I don't have food to eat and you're going to church, they're like, Will you chop it? Is that going to be your dinner? Is your salvation going to pay your rent? Oh, no, 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 wait. Your salvation will take care of your mortgage. You are right. And that's what the devil is telling you. Fine, fine, fine. She's talking. You have the gift of salvation. Yeah, yeah. But in reality, it's going to be the middle of the month soon and you haven't paid your mortgage. You know? What are you going to do with that salvation? Are you going to go to your landlord and say, hey, I'm saved and trade it in for a month free of rent? So the devil will throw all of these thoughts at you to minimize the gift you have. And once he's able to minimize that gift, you you stop looking at it as important. I have Jesus, but I don't have money. I have Jesus, but I'm not well. I have Jesus, but my child, my children are stressing me out. I have Jesus, but my husband left me. And then once you start on that rabbit hole, he's coming. You remember, he's, he has only three assignments, steal, kill, and destroy. He's right there to steal that pail of joy. And once he gets it, no matter how many minutes you spend praising God, nothing supernatural occurs. You're praising only in the flesh. Amen? I want us to pay close attention to this pillar called the joy of your salvation. 
David, he, he, when he sinned, he prayed that in the book of Psalms, I think it's 53 or 52. He said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. He knew how important that was. And I know sometimes we feel the joy of my salvation is just what I get when I'm saved. No. It is, I, I always like to look at it from the book of Isaiah. It is the pale I use to draw anything I want from my Savior. Anything at all. Health, I draw. Wealth, I draw it. I mean, y'all tell me stuff we, we can get from him. Peace, we draw it. What else? I know this is in Sunday school. Strength, we draw it. I mean, anything. Food, we draw it. Clothes, it could be as little as anything and as big as anything. It's all there in the well of salvation. With joy. Can we all say that together? With joy, joy. I will draw, I will draw. Out, of the well out of the well of salvation. Of salvation. Do you believe that? Yes. That's enough to give him praise for. That's enough to give him praise for. It is enough. Amen? And, and I, I wanted to say this at the end, but today while I was just meditating on this. God said I should tell someone, and I don't know who. He said I should tell someone today that even if I wrote it down, even if I do nothing else for you, I have done enough by saving your soul. Even if I do nothing else for you, I have done enough by saving your soul. We need to be thankful for that. We need, we need to praise him for that. And I know sometimes it's not easy when we look at the things we don't have, but when we look at the fact that our souls are forever saved, we look at the fact that we have escaped hell. Like a bird, we've escaped. The snare is broken and our souls have escaped. It's enough to give him, why don't we just put our hands together and give him praise this evening. Because of all the people in the world, he deemed us worthy enough to die for us and to save our souls. Of everybody in the world, everybody, how many people I don't even know, he looked down and said, this one I'm saving. This one the devil is not having. That's a privilege, people. That's a privilege. It doesn't matter about the rent and all of that, whatever. We have the greatest gift, amen? amen? The second pillar I want to talk about, and I'll, I'll rush through that quickly. And I'm not, I'm not, these are not the only pillars your praise can be built on. I'm, I'm sure they're multiple. But these are the ones I'm talking about today. Is understanding that while thanksgiving is important, raw undiluted praise is important, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm Pastor Goodluck's daughter. I could make up my own English. Thanking God is really important, and I, I don't want to minimize that at all. Thanking God is a fantastic way to see the supernatural happen in your life. Remember the lepers? I mean, there are multiple instances where thanking God just opens doors. But you see, there are some times, there are some kind of doors that raw, undiluted praise opens even faster. What's the difference? When we thank God, we thank him for what he has done. When we give him that raw praise, we praise him for who he is. It doesn't matter what he has done or what he will do. Because sometimes when we're focused on what he has done, Lord, I thank you. And sometimes, you know, we do that in faith. I thank you because tomorrow I'm going to be a millionaire. Oh yeah, Lord, I thank you for that one. Every time I'm up here, I say something new. I thank you because I'm going to be a millionaire. I was going to say maybe not tomorrow, but it could be tomorrow. Who knows? I thank you, Lord, because I'm going to be a millionaire. I thank you, Lord. You know, and then day one, the millions are not there. You're still a uh, hundred near. And day two and day three, and you're like, Lord, I thank you. And your bank account is like, you started out at $100, and it's the end of the week confessing that, and you're now at $29.99. <laughs> and you're like, wow, Lord, you know, you're saying it this time, but not just saying it as, as, with as much meaning. I thank you because I'm a millionaire, Lord. I thank you because I'm a millionaire. And it's trickling down 1999. And you're like, seriously? 
Sometimes it's not easy to thank God that way. But when you praise him, this is not about you and your problem. This is about him and who he is. And you know what he is? Always consistent. So you're praising him. Lord, I thank you. Because you are the provider. You are the alpha. You are the omega. There is nothing you cannot do. This has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with my millions or hundreds or thousands. This has everything to do with you and how great you are. Once you concentrate, there's a song we used to sing when we were little, let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on him and worship him. Once you concentrate on who he is, that, that's when your eyes are fixed firmly on who he is, then that praise causes supernatural turnaround. Amen? So I'm not saying don't thank God for what he has done, but every once in a while, praise God for who he is. This is the deepest part of praise. It, you, but you praise him from a position of knowing in your Noah. That, and I, I got that from Pastor Joy. She always says that. I know in my Noah. It's from knowing in your Noah that the person you are praising is more than able to do anything. So when you, First Chronicles, let, let's turn to First Chronicles 16, verse 23 and 27. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His, this is just an example of that type of praise. His wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Nowhere here do you see my problem. Or, oh, I mean, their problem. <laughs> I didn't write that. But nowhere there do you see that. You just see, you're just listing the attributes of God. Let's move on to Exodus 15. Verse 11, I just want to drop some of these scriptures so we can see that raw, undiluted praise. Exodus 15, 11. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Who? Let's move on to Psalm 95, from verse, verse 3 to 7. You can write some of the scriptures down when you go home. Search out your Bible and look for some of them. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The height of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed dry land. Let's move on to verse 5. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. When you, I would explain it this way. Again, where I come from, there's something we call oriki. And it is when, as a parent, and my mother did that to me all, all my, every time, you know, as, through my childhood, you look at your child on some days when you're especially happy and you begin to lavish praise on your child. So sometimes, as a child, my mom still does it to me till today, I'm walking and my mom would go, ah, that, sometimes she'll say it in our native dialect, I see Boloko, see my daughter. That is my girl, the princess of the world, the only daughter, my only first daughter, a beautiful girl, a great woman of God. Look at her. She'll not tell me, turn around, my princess. Let me admire you. And she will be talking and, and she will keep going. And you know, at that point, uh, you're like, mom, oh, stop, mom. <laughs> And she is lavishing and, and calling me all my pet names. Every pet name she would say. And sometimes it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's like praise worship. <laughs> and she's just speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. And sometimes when she gets so excited or she's speaking like that, she'll go to her purse and bring her some money and put it. And let me spray you, my daughter, my princess. You know, and when I walk out of there, I walk with my head like three times the right. So I'm like, I could, I feel like I could, I could float. My head is that big. I feel like I could float. So now I have my little baby, Ariella. I do it with her all the time. I carry her and I'm just lavishing my praise, doing the oriki, calling her all my pet names, all my dad, dad, proper child. 
And I'm saying, you are a beautiful girl. Look at you, perfection, creation. Ah, look, God took his time specially to make you. Obviously, she doesn't understand, and she's just looking like, can you give me my bottle? But <laughs> and as human beings, when we say these praise words, there's this feeling we get. Imagine doing this to God. Imagine you're like, God, this isn't about me. I'm not here to talk about anything. I just want to spend some time just, just telling you who you are. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are Jehovah. You are Yahweh. You are the mighty man of war. You are the one who sits on the heaven and you have the earth as your footstool. You are the creator of the universe. Is there anything you cannot do? You are the big God, almighty, invincible God, immortal God. I am that I am, the great man of war. And you are calling God all his praises. Tell me why God will show up. Tell me why God will not step in. You are calling him all his names. Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh. Ah, Shekinah and glo- I mean, by the time you are done, that your little room will be so filled with angels, God, the 24 L, I mean, things will happen. <laughs> you will start to see things supernaturally. And that situation that looks so great will begin to turn around. That is the secret to supernatural turnaround. And I know I love to pray, and I talk about prayer a lot because it's important, but men, sometimes we need to sit back and just praise. And this is the way you can praise, and it's not artificial. It's by understanding the joy of your salvation and then understanding his names. As a matter of fact, I want to give everyone homework. I know, this is not Sunday school, but wouldn't that be fun? I want you to sit down and just write the names of God. Just sit, meditate, and just write out his names or type, whatever works best for you. The names of God. And I dare you to go through that list every day. I dare you to see if things will not turn around in your life. Just, even if you don't know the names of God, There is a name that is above all names. At the mention of that name, every knee. Even if all you are saying is Jesus, 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 Jesus. You are calling him Savior. Why won't he save? There's a song we used to sing. My dad used to make us sing this song all the time. When we call him Savior, we call him by his name. When we call him healer, we call him by his name. When we call him deliverer, we call him by his name. If all you are saying is Jesus, Jesus, Je-, you, are, you are invoking things in the supernatural. I want us to not just listen. I want us to do. Our lives can change. And I'm not saying we will not have problems. But I'm saying we have the solution. Already, even before the problem comes, we already are fixed. We have connections in high places. We know the boss. There's nothing to be afraid of and there's nothing to be worried about. The creator of the universe, we call him daddy. One first, first name, <laughs> first name basis. He knows my name and I know his too. And that's another thing. He knows us. How well do we know him? I dare you to practice all of this and see if things will not change. So that little homework, I want all of us to do it. I'm going to do it too. Write his names. Call him. The Bible is filled with names. But then you have Google too that's also quick to help you pull out the names. (laughs) In case going through will be, you know, it could be long to go through that. You could just Google What are the names of God? (laughs) That's an easy one. And you start writing it down and you could be the first to finish. Who knows? Maybe we'll convince pastor to give another gift card for that one. But by the time you sit and meditate on his names, you know, even when you're confused, we heard someone say that the other way and I, I, I got to practice that. 
I just looked and I, was, I heard this person say that and I was starting to feel a little confused and I kept just saying, Jesus, you are the way. You are the way. You are the way. You are the way. And just as he said, I didn't say show me the way. I said show me yourself. You are the way. Show me you. I need a way. Show me you. You are the way. By the time I said it so many times, you are the way. That was my way of praising him. You are the way. You are the way. I just kept saying that you are the way. Clarity. And it wasn't like a magic wand. You know, I just saw someone wave. Oh, like Marie and Deanna having their books. And all of a sudden, ding, ding, this is what to do. It didn't happen that way. I said it quite a couple of times. And then as I sat meditating, clarity, things just began to shift in my thinking. And all of a sudden, it became easy. Whatever was so confusing became easy because I know the way. And you do too because he's the way, he's the truth, and he's what? We're going to practice, let's stand up this evening we're going to sing songs just to praise God and worship him and just exalt him for who he is. It doesn't matter the voice, the melody, or anything, but for the next few minutes, I want us to forget everything, what we are going through, and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I want us to concentrate and worship him this evening. Can we do that? Can we put, as you worship and as you praise him, don't forget, you have salvation already. You have the greatest gift. So even though you don't feel like doing it, stand on that pillar of praise and say, God, even if I have nothing else to worship you about, the fact that you saved my soul is more than enough. Amen? Amy and OJ are just going to lead us to worship God this evening. Why don't you lift your hands and just tell him how much you love him and tell him I praise you.
Give me sharp praise to you. We bring our sacrifice of praise to you. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, the lover of our souls. Jehovah. 